Sengait Law, and welcome to the Cedar House Sessions here in beautiful Skidigate, Haida Gwaii, territory of the Haida Nation. This uh, program is a collaborative effort of the Haida Gwaii Radio Society and the Gingang Fatulgad Independent Music and Arts Cooperative. It's an honor to have Jason Camp and the Posers here in the studio today. They're going to be releasing their album for a bit of an audience, and uh, it's great to have you guys. Awesome. How over having us, sir? How about for having having us here yeah. today? This has been a hello, 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 hello. this has been a long time coming. Yeah, it has been a long time coming, but I'm glad that we got it together here and especially to line it up with the release of your album, First Contact. Um, so I know you guys have been working on this album for a while, a couple years now. Um, just wanted to ask, like, how does it feel to be finally releasing it and to be releasing it in this setting in the Cedar House? Well. Hopefully it goes past the setting of the Cedar House, but it feels pretty dang good to finally have something done and mastered and finished. And I think that we did a good job. As yeah, the most important part is to uh, invite people here to the Cedar House in this community and let the community see it first. And um, this community is the one that supported us through everything since like day one when we were playing at Kaiolna Guy. <laughs> we played that little crummy show in and a, everyone showed up for us and so it's important for us to release it here in Skidigat and in giving the back in the Heritage yeah. Center. Yeah. That Plus, who doesn't like the feel of a release? <laughs> 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 oh boy. Johnny Bagel, classy a, as always. We got a classy Johnny Bagel behind us. You give me my back Should I feel grateful you've taken my land I'm gonna reconcile but you won't say genocide Tell me what you've done to my kind
be an American man when a corporate army and roll on to Rakistan. Liberate the soil, pump freedom from the sand. Yeah, I want to be an American man. Meaning. Seven stars have hit the floor. We got all this democracy. What's it worth without a war? Plenty men in Congress want to send us like a bar. I got my marching orders. Civil rights is such a bore. <laughs> to keep its belly full. I'm tuning into politics. Gonna watch the White House show. Take it over, comment sections. I'm gonna eat the country. <laughs> Your music has been described in the past as post-colonial rage rock. <laughs> and you cover topics such as the farce of reconciliation, environmental destruction, two-faced politicians, the list goes on. <laughs> and we're just wondering, how do you channel the rage into a constructive form like your music? I think it's pretty important to channel rage into a constructive platform. I've channeled it into deconstructive platforms lots of times and have been in trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping to not get in as much trouble for this sort of release. <laughs> release is good. That's, that's just going to be a running joke now. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, your energy is definitely felt through your live performance, so I think like it's only right to release the album this way to an audience in, the, in its live format. Um, but again, really excited to, to listen to the final product. Um, with that being said, Laura covered some of the topics that you guys touch on in, in your music and on the album, so what do you guys want people to take away from First Contact? The album's kind of structured you know, kind of like an A and B side, right? So yeah, it, the intro is almost like a like a high to dance performance where it comes in and uh, 
there's like a clearing of the air and a lot of truths are spoken very quickly and openly right into your ear and um so we want to get those messages there and in front of you and then the first kind of side is all you know there's some there's some little johnny bagel outtakes but there's also it's mostly serious the first side and uh you know it touches on some cultural stories and different things and political messages and then the b side is also that you know because indigenous people a lot of the times aren't don't get uh, allowed to have fun. <laughs> and I think that, you know, part of our message needs to be a very serious message because the world is falling apart. But also that we need to have fun also. Uh, I don't know. That's kind of what I was going with with this, with this album. So there's kind of a... The bagels are uh, intakes. You intake bagel. You don't outtake them. There's no outtakes. To, to me, there's actually... Uh, we, we have two audiences and... Um, well, you can say that we have two audiences, and, and yeah, in Haida no Gwaii, they're represented, no and they're represented in this room right now, where you have like the Haida audience, the indigenous audience, and then you have like the non-indigenous supporters and allies as well. And so, like to me, like the first uh, the first half of the album, um, you know, don't feel bad if you want to rock out to both. Yeah, no, you can have the a, album. You can have a good time on the as front half. anybody that you may be, but uh, the first half um, speaks more about. Is a, it's a communication about what post-colonialism feels like. Um, and that's more for our um, indigenous audience to uh, feel okay with expressing that and, and also for us to have a sort of release about what that feels like. And then um, for the non-indigenous audience to like listen and understand um, in a open way you know where where no one's cornering you and like screaming at you about how it feels or whatever but you know it's, you can listen to the album and understand when you think about it and the second half is uh so everyone can enjoy themselves and and so that they you know our indigenous audience at, at shows they love our fun songs they bounce around and they're right. always so supportive at every show that we do right and so that's wonderful to see uh, a massive crowd of indigenous audience members just enjoying themselves and not having to think about all the problems that they have, you know, yeah, like it's all nice, the shit that comes with Nice to just leave it, leave it on the side for a moment Yeah, and uh, just yeah. have a good time together. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so for me, like, I would consider that to be more for our indigenous audiences just to enjoy, you know, the second half of the album. And yeah, as I said, like... If you're a white person and want to enjoy that half too, that's great. Hey, half of me is a white person wanting to enjoy that half. That's, 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 part, of, <laughs> that's part of the magic here. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a metaphor. <laughs> yeah.
ready for a few more years And I might never be ready to begin I hardly remember how I made you feel Be like me next to him Wow! This one is a, it's almost a nameless song. We've been calling it Circle Set, but it's about a, the plight of many uh, fishermen over the time when they, um, you know, are taken advantage of by commercial fishing licenses holders. And then, uh, you know, failing, because that's what the system's designed for. And then coming up empty and having to resort to different ways of survival. Also just sort of fending off the hundreds of years of DFO mismanagement and yeah. the general death of the oceans. Not to personally call the Department of Fisheries Affairs or Fuck whatever. Fish <laughs> Fisheries and Oceans. I'll do it. Fuck fish farms. <laughs> we can call them out personally because they're shitty. <laughs>
have a special connection to the cedar house made some memories here it's your practice space it was re your recording studio it's Graham and molly's home um how has it been to see the cedar house sessions blossom and to watch so many Haida Gwaii artists roll through here like okay so for me that's <laughs> like the dream i am <laughs> so so happy with uh just being able to be this fringe guy that like gets to host all these incredible people that are in our community you know and they just roll through and then this crew like runs the whole show and then they get to just come in here and just kill it you know and <laughs> So for me, I just love it. I love it. And I think I've missed pretty much every Cedar House session because I'm out hunting or like hiking around or whatever. Sometimes I'm at work or, but I always feel good because I, I get to come in at the very end. I've, I've, I've been hitting the ends of the Cedar House sessions. And so it's great to just come in and see how everybody's feeling after they're done. And everyone's just so happy that they have a recording. Um, and there's so much talent in Haida Gwaii that isn't normally captured. And uh, to me, that's what this is, you know, that's, and that I, I, I feel so good about it, you know, and so, yeah. I feel like Cedar House Sessions has just scraped the surface of the talent I had to go out. There's tons of people like that we could be, we could con just continue on and I hope for sure that we do get to continue on. Yeah, every now and again, everyone hits that perfect, that perfect high and then just like starts rapping at a party and you're like, what the heck? Like <laughs> 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 the, the wonderful mix. You've clearly been practicing in the basement, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, like the, the wonderful mix of creativity. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. place is for me is like just this always been this like you just walk in here and it's just like time to create and like free and open creation. Even just in practice earlier. Mm -hmm. We were just making up stuff on the spot, and this, this is what we do here. He sits at the drums, and I sit at the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> we just make. Yeah, we we just uh, we just trash song after song until we hit something that really is yeah. uh, is pretty killer, yeah. and then we we practice that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this one's about residential schools and the cultural oppression of our people. <laughs> Yeah. 
Earth ain't shit unless it's flat. Drive that pipeline through a government back. I'm rolling coal, my money is black. We took this land and we ain't giving it back. Holy water, to the power. Kill the Indian and save the child. I don't want no whiskey, I don't want no smiles Want justice and no more lies I don't want no treaties, I don't want no lies I want freedom from your job Rolling water through the plows Kill the Indian and save the child That he took her from me Cause the raven might have brought the light But last night A raven stole my wife Gave her everything she could possibly need A longhouse, a copper, children at our feet They paddled her away in the middle of the night Raven had just for my beautiful wife Running through the night under cover of the trees I could hear it speak, mimicking me Dying breath, I'll be hunting him down. Dreaming of ways to spill his blood on the ground. Early every morning, I shoot arrows at the sea. Aiming at the spot that he took her from me And Raven might have 
Playing well. <laughs> well, uh, Jason Camp and the Posers, it's uh, like I've been saying, it's an honor to have you here for the Cedar House sessions. Congratulations on the release of your album, First Contact. Good luck at your album release party tonight, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be great. Gathering, get together. Um, recording session. Recording session. The recording the session. The bagel yes. back is yeah. back. Obviously, it's going to be great. Okay, well, it'll be something. <laughs> All right. All right, cheers, how are you? Cheers, boys. Yeah.
took to Pelton with the white man's train. Those riches took me away from my home. Woman I loved, she needed to go. One last time before I die. Man, I gotta get back to her. Forsaken wreck I can't split her All too hair I see your hair On every way This could be My final day One last time Before I die Man I gotta get back To higher yourself. Check the waitresses and managers. This isn't real money, guys. So uh, we printed this money in a secret office in the North End. This isn't real. This isn't real. You can take the money home, but we have a song that we wrote. <laughs> this is a song we wrote about, um, you know, at the end of a at, a, at the end of a gathering. There's always all sorts of stuff to take home, like leftovers and this is a foamy, foamy fake $50 bills and extra beer, biscuits, stuff like that. We have a song for the dinner song. We have a song for the middle of the time. <laughs>